This badge has quite a cult following in India. Since 2001, it's meant that power and performance is accessible. Everyone can have it. And time after time, Bajaj has come out with iterations of the Pulsar that give the rider a little more bang for their buck. And dare I say it, I think Bajaj has done it again. Say hello everyone to the Pulsar NS400Z. Now before we get into detail, don't forget to subscribe to the Auto Today YouTube channel so that you get notified every time we make a video upload. So then, let's get cracking. Let's start with the design. Now the first thing that you notice is that this very much looks like a Pulsar and that is a good thing. Maybe a little more N-series than NS-series or maybe a nice little blend of both. Whether it's that cyclop looking projector headlamp, those funky shaped DRLs or these tank extensions and graphics or the Pulsar badging, it's very much out there. Even the seat here is quite angular along with all the elements around here. On the rear fender, you've got the NS400Z badging and again, these funky looking grab handles. Around the back, you've got that signature twin LED Pulsar tail lamp and this section is pretty well designed too. What about the features though? Bajaj has you covered there because the NS400Z comes back to the gills with up to the minute details. For example, you've got a preload adjustable rear monoshock, you've got a traction control system, dual channel ABS, a 43mm USD fork up front, You've got a color LCD screen with riding modes. And these are ECU mapped riding modes. You get road, rain, off-road and sport. Now that you're better acquainted with the NS400Z, it was time to hit the road and see how it performs there. First things first, this Pulsar is powered by the same engine as the Domina. We're talking about the 373cc single cylinder petrol motor, which produces 39 bhp and 35 Nm of peak torque. Right off the bat, you notice there's a buzzy nature to the engine. It sort of reminded me of the first time I rode the Pulsar 220F and the Pulsar 200, which I feel is a huge compliment. It's got a fairly deep exhaust note, and once you're on the move, it does sound rather gruff. The ride-by-wire throttle ensures that the power delivery is consistent and there's a lot of it on tap. One twist of the throttle ensures that the NS400Z gets a move on with a sense of urgency. Folks at Bajaj say that 85% of the torque is available from 3500 RPM and that certainly can be felt when you're out on the highway and looking for that quick overtake. But in city conditions, it takes a slight bit of effort to get the Z up to speed. But once it's there, the acceleration is instantaneous. 0 to 60 kmph is set to come up in just 2.8 seconds, while 0 to 100 kmph can be dispatched in 6.9 seconds. The riding modes also make a significant difference to the nature of the power delivery. Road feels most comfortable, while sport gives that extra zest. The rain mode is subdued to make for a safer riding experience, while off-road is reserved for those roads filled with gravel or rough batches in general. On Bajaj's test track, we were able to achieve a top speed of 165 kmph, which again is spectacular. Speaking of the track, the NS400Z comes with the same frame as the NS200, but has been strengthened further to account for the extra weight and power. The swing arm is larger than the NS200, but the 400Z is 20mm shorter thanks to the one degree of difference in the rake angle. The suspension setup is also new. Overall, the motorcycle weighs 174 kilograms. On the track, it did feel slightly cumbersome around corners, but not in a threatening way at all. On the highway, that extra weight does mean more stability, and the Z just sort of rides over undulations with ease. It may not be the most agile pulsar out there, but it can more than hold its own in most situations. The 805 seat height might be slightly high for shorter riders and the 165 mm of ground clearance may not be the best in class but in our riding stints which involved a number of different kind of conditions the z never scraped its belly even once the 43 mm usd fork mentioned earlier and the six-step adjustable rear monoshock do more than an able job 
to keep the NS400Z planted and comfortable. The seat itself felt rather supportive and I didn't end up feeling tired after almost a whole day of riding. The seating position itself feels more upright but the foot pegs are slightly rear set for that extra control. Both brakes feel more than adequate, in fact they feel quite progressive and bring the NS400Z to a stop with quite a lot of ease. Speaking of which, the 6-speed gearbox with the slip and assist system isn't the smoothest but it gets the job done either way. However, the clutch lever feels rather light and is adjustable just like the brake lever. Overall, performance is the NS400Z's trump card, especially when you consider the pricing. How does one sum up the Pulsar NS400Z? Price-wise, it'll set you back rupees 1.85 lakh ex showroom. And if that's the focal point, well, then this bike has absolutely zero competition. It's in a league of its own, whether you compare it to its siblings or anything else out in the market. And don't forget that Z means this is a first of its kind. So best to sum up this motorcycle as a brand new chapter of an already storied Pulsar franchise. <laughs>